In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to configure and use the DreamReport Remote Connectivity Server. The Remote Connectivity Server, or RCS as it's commonly called, is a utility that facilitates communication between DreamReport communication drivers running on remote PCs with remote drivers configured on the DreamReport runtime engine. So why use the Remote Connectivity Server? In most cases, the included DreamReport communication drivers can be used to communicate with local or remote data sources like HMIs, PLCs, historians, data loggers, and other log files or databases. However, certain drivers or automation products don't natively allow for remote connections, so the Remote Connectivity Server allows us to bypass this limitation. Anyone who's ever tried to set up communications with an OPC server running on a remote PC knows the effort it takes to get DCOM security set up correctly. The RCS eliminates the need for DCOM security when connecting to remote OPC servers. The RCS has a feature that allows you to archive and compress remote historical data and alarm logs for faster transmission to the DreamReport server. And finally, it communicates securely with geographically dispersed data sources using secure web services. The RCS can be set up to communicate over a LAN or WAN or over the internet. The Remote Connectivity Service supports the following data types. Real-time values from HMIs, PLCs, controllers, and other live data sources, and you can control the transfer or update rate to the DreamReport node. Historical values, data stored in historical log files and HMIs, process historians and databases, and historical alarms, alarm log files stored in remote machines. There are actually two main components to the RCS. The remote connector, which will be installed and configured on the remote PC, and the remote driver, which is configured on the DreamReport machine. In this example, we're showing a PC at a remote location communicating with a PLC using an appropriate third-party OPC server. Back at our main building, we have a PC running DreamReport. The first thing we need to do is open the remote connector on the remote PC and configure its communication properties. That is, how the remote driver on the DreamReport PC will connect and communicate with it. We can also configure how the remote connector will start up and the log file detail level. Once that's done, we now need to configure one or more DreamReport communication drivers. Here, since we need to communicate with an OPC server, we've selected the DreamReport OPC DA real-time values driver and configured it to talk locally to the OPC server. We're now done with the remote PC and need to configure the DreamReport side. In DreamReport Studio, we'll open the Communication Drivers wizard, and instead of choosing a product-specific communication driver to configure, we select one of the remote drivers, either real-time values, historical values, or historical alarms. When configuring the remote driver, you'll see that it simply needs to know how to communicate with the remote connector service, and once you verify that connection, you can then select the appropriate driver that was previously configured on the remote connector. Depending on the type of driver, real-time values, historical values, or historical alarms, there are additional options to optimize communications. At this point, you can create your reports on the local Dream Report machine and browse for tags as if they were local. When you run Dream Report, it will communicate with a remote connector using secure web services, optionally log the data locally, and then generate the reports as needed. Here I have two machines running. One is my main Dream Report reporting server, and the other is a remote machine connected to a simulated PLC using an OPC server. I'll start off by working on the remote machine. I should first find out what the IP address is of this machine, as I'll need it for the remote connector configuration later on. I'll launch the remote connector configurator from the ODS program group. Here I'm going to specify a password that the remote driver on the Dream Report side will need to connect with. I'll specify a port through which to communicate, and whether SSL or Secure Sockets layer will be used. Make sure to verify that the specified port is available and open if a firewall is in place. This is the most common reason when troubleshooting remote connector problems. I'll also specify that the remote connector will auto-start and run as an application or a service. Now that that's done, I need to configure a specific communication driver. From the list of drivers, since I need to communicate with an OPC server, I'll go to the Open Communication Protocols section and configure an instance of the OPC DA driver. Let me give it a name, 
and configure and test the driver. Once I've added the configured driver to the list, you'll see it listed as an available driver in the remote connector. I'm going to quickly repeat this for a local access database that's being used from another data logger. This will be a historical values data source. So, I'll choose the ODBC historical values driver, give it a name, and configure it as needed. This driver has now been added to the remote connector, so all that's left on this side is to start up the remote connector service, and then I'm done. Back on the Dream Report machine, I'm first going to verify that I can ping the remote machine using that same IP address. Since that was successful, let me create a new Dream Report project, name it, and start configuring the remote driver. You'll notice here that instead of choosing a product or platform specific driver, I go to the remote folder. I'll first set up the connection to the remote real-time values driver. Let me give it a descriptive name and then configure it. Here I enter the IP address of the remote machine, the specified port, SSL if used, and the required password. I'll now test the connection. Once connected, I can now select any of the configured remote communication drivers. You see here that only the real-time value driver shows up in the list. I'll pick that and set up an update rate of every second. Once done, I'll add it to the project. And then also quickly set up a connection to the remote historical values driver. After picking the remote driver, I can configure the driver to archive the data set if more than X number of values are returned for a report query. This setting allows the remote connector to create a compression package of X number of data points or values from the historical archive at the host side and send that compressed package of data to the remote driver on the Dream Report side where it is uncompressed and then reported on. We're now done with configuring the remote connectors and we can now start building our reports. At this point, for the remote real time values, I can create logging groups to log the data locally. In the Logger Studio, I can select the remote driver, browse for tags to be logged, and set up the logging options. When I start monitoring the real-time values, you see the data updates and no DCOM security was even needed to communicate with the remote server. For the remote historical data source, I can create a new report and start configuring objects with remotely logged tags. Let me add a quick item table, select the external history server, which is our remote process logs driver, and then select the tags to report on. For more information on creating reports in Dream Report and many other reporting topics, be sure to view our other video tutorials. Thank you.